the biggest difference between Canadian companies and, and U.S. companies is sort of the the classic stereotype of U.S. companies uh, and founders tend to be really good at marketing and, and selling themselves. And when you dig into the, the contracts or the technology a little bit further, it usually takes a little bit more diligence to uncover what's really going on. The Canadian uh, founders tend to be a little bit of the opposite. Uh, things actually tend to be a little bit stronger in terms of the fundamentals of building an actual solid business. Our goal uh, when we invest in Canadian companies uh, is actually to help build that vision of what a really big, successful, venture-backed company looks like. My biggest advice for Canadian founders is two things. Number one is start early. There's the reality that most U.S. funds are still trying to get their feet under them in terms of what their strategy will be uh, investing in Canada. And secondly is, you know, I blame Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, but I think founders have been uh, trained to think that they walk in and pitch once and they get a yes or no on the spot, when in reality we like to get to know founders over the course of weeks, months, and sometimes even, even years before we end up investing in them. We're really comfortable uh, working with Canadian investors. They tend to be very practical, rational investors. There's a lot here that um, have great uh, local uh, experience, both as VCs and as operators. Frankly, whenever we invest uh, in a region outside of the, the Northeast US. Uh, we like to have somebody local. I find the Canadian entrepreneurs ambitious. I don't find them bold enough. You want to be able to create, uh, to compete on a global basis. And uh, in order to do that, you have to find the best talent, you, ha you have to find the best uh, investors, and you have to, to find the best partners. And you have to come with that thinking very early on and think globally. A lot of people play coy on this and they don't want to share their data. And maybe I'm the buyer here, so I'm a little jaded on this, but my view is, you know, your deck's got to be really good and that quote unquote non-confidential deck has to have everything in it that's going to motivate me to go to the next step. Then playing coy with me around your data room is a humongous mistake. You want to make sure that if I've now made the decision to move forward from that meeting, and I'm gonna take one of my analysts and one of my partners, and they're gonna spend hours of their time. VCs are super busy, so you've got somebody's attention now, you gotta figure out how you're gonna captivate them. So the to-do is you have to, in the first 15 minutes, get everyone in the room on your side, right? You gotta tell a story that's captivating, you gotta tell them why you're the person or your team or the people, why this technology matters, why the development of this technology is gonna be game-changing, that the economics of doing this and investing in this business are gonna be engaging for investors. So that's what you gotta get in the first 10, 15 minutes. Everything after that is validating your story. We demand that any company who presents to us, we have to have their deck five days in advance. Why do we want that deck? So our team is super prepared, right? But I also want that deck so that it goes into my archive. And so the next time you come back, I get to check out how you've performed against the expectations that you set for me in that meeting. That example I was talking about earlier was someone like an Ali Triani, who we, we had a seven year relationship with before we actually invested in his company. I got to look at his story as it evolved. And I got to see, did he take feedback that we gave him? Did he listen to the conversations? Our expectation uh, about governance is actually very high. We, uh, as institutional investors, uh, have to report to our own stakeholders. Uh, who are big institutions. We have to report to these uh, people. And um, obviously we expect that, that level of transparency uh, at the company level. At an early stage, uh, it's a bit less about governance and more about uh, operations and, uh, and tactics. But as the company grow and as we prepare them to, to raise money on the public market or at, the, at a later stage, Governance will take more and more importance. So we will want to see more independence at the board level um, and at the management level. And uh, we'll want to you know, prepare the company to being public at some point. In terms of time spent in, in the US, I think it really depends on what's going on in your business, where your target market is, and where your target investors are. Uh, I think you know, for each of our companies, it's, it's a really mixed bag. We have one that's in an incubator accel accelerator in, uh, in the West Coast, so they'll be there for three months. We have one that spends a little bit of time in New York, but not more than once a quarter. And then we have another one that is there pretty regularly. Um, and when he comes down, 
you know, New York's an interesting environment in particular because you can have 10, 12 meetings in a day, and he's sort of caught the uh, excitement of the New York market and how much you can get done so so quickly. So I think it's helpful, but not always necessary at certain p times in your company. In order to prepare to work with investors, um, you have to ask questions. You have to be uh, uh, diligencing uh, who are the type of investors you want to work with. Uh, you need to know them at the firm level, at the individual level. You need to work closely with um, your consultants, your lawyers, uh, to really understand, you know, is this type of financing uh, the right one for you? Venture capitalists can cr bring a lot of things at the table. It also comes with uh, some challenges. Uh, you need to be very comfortable with that. But when the relationship works, uh, it can create uh, very interesting things for the companies. That's exactly what happens with the good CEOs. I think that's part of being a leader of a team. You have to, look, we're looking for those characteristics. Can you attract great people? Can you attract capital? Can you get people to do things for you that other people can't get them to do, right? That's what leadership's about, right? And you've got to show those things in those meetings. And if you're not that person, you need to recognize that. And here's the role I really want to have in the company. And look, let's work together to you know, find that fabulous uh, CEO to drive the, the business forward. Our expectation for compensation uh, at the management level, we want all the executive team and the staff uh, to be well compensated, to be compensated at market, but also be compensated through the equity. So we are taking uh, lots of risk. We are expecting uh, the founders and the employees to be uh, aligned, to share the, the profit with us. So we need to make sure that the people we're going to attract uh, are aligned and well compensated because the, the competition is global. So these people are being called all the time to serve on the later stage companies, uh, public companies globally and want to be able to, to attract them. You have to be bold. And in order to be bold, you have to attract the best talent possible. And uh, with the best talent possible, you'll develop the best tech. And with the best tech, you'll attract, uh, you'll attract the money. Get prepared for lots of no's. It's the hardest thing in fundraising, right? Everyone believes in what they're doing. They think they're right. They think their thing is the perfect thing. Hearing 99 people tell you no as you quest for that one person who says yes is hard. And you have to steal yourself for that, right? There's so many reasons why an investor will not do the deal. Most of it is because it just doesn't fit uh, their investment criteria. It has nothing to do with you. There's nothing personal about that. Just don't waste any time trying to understand why it didn't work and just continue pounding it and you'll find eventually an investor that will do the deal. That's my one advice to the entrepreneur. My second advice to, to him or her is really no doesn't mean never. Yeah, life is too short, right? So just focus on what you can control and uh, there's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of investors in Canada, in the US, in Europe, and Asia. Your job is to find them. And there always be someone who'd be interested in your story.